In this demo, I want to show you how we can build a workflow that's going to leverage an external web service. For comparison's sake, I want to build the same workflow I built in the previous module with SharePoint Designer 2013. Recall that we created a list to start with. The list contained customers and would only require the user enter in a customer ID. The workflow will take the customer ID and use it to query a publicly accessible web service to collect additional information about the customer. It will then take this information and update the list item that triggered the workflow with the customer data. Now before I create the workflow, let me show you the service that we're going to use. At the time of recording, this service was published and made accessible on the OData website located at www.odata.org. This service exposes the popular Microsoft SQL sample server database called Northwind. The sample implements the OData specification and still supports the old way of telling the service to return data as JSON. Step one is to create a new project, which you've already seen me do a couple times. This project is going to be a SharePoint hosted app, and I'll debug it using the dev.sp.swampland.local site. After creating the project, I'll add a new custom list to the project and call it customers. This list needs to have a few fields in it for storing the customer information. Since all I'm doing is creating a custom list and adding some fields, which doesn't have anything really to do with creating the workflow, I've sped the process up a little bit. Next, we need to create a workflow, so I'll add a new workflow called Complete Customer Details Workflow to my project. I'll separate the words out to make it a little bit more friendly to the end user. I'll also set it as a list workflow and create an association with the customers list in our project. First, I like to rename this, the default sequence activity to root. Now our workflow will have four major components to it. First, it's going to collect the user, the customer ID from the list item that started the workflow. Second, it's going to call the external web service to get additional details about the customer. And third, it's going to parse the web service response. And then finally, it's going to update the list item with the values it got from the response. To keep these different objectives organized, I'm going to add four sequences to the root sequence and add, rename them appropriately. Let's take a look at the sequence called init. The first step was to get the customer ID. So for this, we need the properties of the item that started the workflow. And to get these, I'm going to use the lookup SP list item activity, which is going to use the SharePoint REST API to get the information. The output of this activity is a dynamic value with all the properties in the list item. We'll need something to hold this response. So within the init sequence, I'm going to create a new variable called customer item properties and change the data type to dynamic value and then leave its scope to init as it will only be used in the current scope. Then I'll add the lookup SP list item activity to the sequence. I'm going to set the list ID property to the current list, which is customers, and the item ID to the current item, and the result to the variable customer item properties, the one that we just created. Now to parse out the customer ID, we're going to use a get dynamic value properties activity, which I can either drag from the toolbox or click on the get properties link in the SP list item activity. Let's create a customer ID variable that's scoped at the root so we can use it throughout the entire workflow. Now I'm going to click define in the get dynamic value properties activity to bring up the properties dialog. I'm going to change the entity type to list item of customers to provide some context to the path options, which is a list of all the fields on the customers list. I'm going to create a mapping from the customer ID field to the customer ID variable that we created to extract the value of the dynamic value into our variable. Okay, our init sequence is now finished, so now let's jump over to the get customer data from service. So I'm now going to switch the view to show the get customer data from service sequence. This is where we will call our web service. However, first let's assemble the URL to our service to look up the specific customer. First create a string variable called the Northwind Service URI that scope to the current sequence as we don't really need it outside of the current sequence. I'm going to create another variable of the type dynamic value called Northwind Service Response to store the web service response. Now the service we're going to query is located at services.odata.org slash northwind slash northwind.svc. To see a list of all the customers inside this service, I add slash customers on the end of the URL as you can see here. For a specific customer, I need to add the ID of the customer in single quotes to the URL. 
I'm also going to want to get the data back in JSON format. So this service supports using the dollar format OData operator. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the URL to see the data coming back as JSON. And then I'm just going to copy this entire URL to the clipboard because we're going to use it in just a second. Let's go back to Visual Studio and let's add an assign activity to the designer. I'll use this to assemble the URL before making the call. I prefer this approach because I can then output the rest URI to the debugger to verify I know what I'm, I can see what I'm calling uh, inside the debug view. I'm then going to set the to part of the assign to the Northwind service URI variable, and then I'm going to open up the expression dialog to set the value. Let's paste the URL in, and let's, then let's change it around a little bit so that the customer ID is going to be is going to be inserted using the variable that we extracted earlier. Now I'm going to call the web service by adding an HTTP send activity to the workflow. I'm going to change his method property to get because I want to do an HTTP get. I'm going to change the URI property to be the, the variable Northwind service URI. And I'm going to change the response content property to be the Northwind service response. I also want to go to my variable called Northwind service response. I'm going to change the scope of this to the root because I'm actually going to go parse this result in a different sequence. Now with the web service called, the next step is to extract the values from the list item. So let's change the focus of the process service response sequence. I'll add a new series of string variables scoped at the root for the different customer properties that are coming back from the web service and that we will update on the list. Just like before, to extract the values from the dynamic value, I'm going to drop a get dynamic value properties activity in the workflow. I'm going to set the source property to the Northwind service response and then click on the dot 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 for the properties dialog. I'm then going to map each property within the service response to the corresponding variable and note that you're going to need to make sure that we use the correct path to the property in the service response as I'm doing using the d slash property name notation as that's how the data comes back in JSON. The last step is going to be to update the list item now that I have all the results. I'm going to change the focus in the designer so that I have the update list item sequence visible and I'm going to add a update list item activity to the workflow. I'm going to change the list ID and the item ID properties to current list and current item respectively because we want to write back to the item that kicked this off. And then I'm going to click on the list item properties dot 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 button and I'm going to change the entity type to the list item of customers and I'm going to map each column in the list to the different variables that I've created in my workflow. So this is going to create a new dynamic value under the covers and that dynamic value is going to be submitted back over to SharePoint using an HTTP post using the uh, SharePoint REST API. Now at this time we're ready to try it out. So I'm going to save the project and click the start button to kick off the debugging process. Again, you'll see the workflow debugging test service host console application pop up. Well, we're not really using it here, but it's there. And then we're going to wait for our app to be deployed. After the app has been installed, the browser opens up to the home page of the app. And ideally I'd probably want a better user experience so that they actually go to the customers list. But for now that's okay. Let's just manually go change the URL so that we actually go to the customers list, which I know is at slash list slash customers. Now let's add a new customer. I know that there's a customer that's got a customer ID of ALFKI. I'm going to go in after I create this one, I'm going to manually start the workflow. Now after I've manually started the workflow, it takes a second for it to get fired up and get going. So while that's going, I'm going to go add another customer in of EASTC and start its workflow as well. Now check this out. By the time I finish adding the second one, the first workflow is already completed. So you can see all the, the first item that we added in for ALFKI already has some data. Now I'm going to go to the details of that item to see all the fields and you can see that it was actually updated by the app as the workflow came through the app web to update it. I can also go to the items workflow instant stats page to see any details but in our case we really didn't put any kind of history information or create any tasks so there's nothing really to see here. And just for completeness let's go back to the list and let's verify the second item has been updated and yes it has so perfect we're in good shape. So in this demo, you saw how to call a web service and update the list item using the results of that service using Visual Studio.